This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about Solana and decentralization theater. I'm using this term theater in the same sense that you'd use safety theater when you're talking about TSA patting down 96-year-old women in wheelchairs in, wheelchairs in, or, in order to make airplanes more safe. Now, Solana is widely marketed as being an ETH killer. It's a, it's a network and a blockchain that you can run smart contracts on. The problem is it's highly, highly centralized. Their advertising says that it's decentralized and unstoppable and censorship resistant. Unfortunately, it's none of those things. It's highly centralized. It actually has a headquarters and it has a CEO. The uh, Solana network went down yesterday and was down for approximately 17 hours. It actually stopped producing blocks completely. But the nice thing about being a centralized cryptocurrency or a centralized network, even though you pretend that you're not, is that you can have a CEO reboot everything. Uh, so here is the, uh, the news from Solana Status that there was a huge uh, transaction flood onto the blockchain, which uh, caused the network to start forking. But fortunately, like I said, when you're, when you're highly centralized, you have a CEO. In this case, uh, Anatoly jumped on Twitter and said, okay, everyone, let's get into Discord, all the validators, because Solana is a proof of stake system. Let's get on there and let's reboot. And they were able to reboot the network under the coordination of the CEO and get it working again. So this is really a, an example of, of fake marketing. And this is the kind of thing we would expect from a cryptocurrency that is almost entirely uh, made for insiders and for the venture capitalists. We can see here, this is a really nice breakdown of different cryptos and the insider insider team. So in this case, insiders includes the team, company, and VC purchased tokens, which are often purchased for just pennies on the share. Solana, you can see this red part here, has the highest of any of these cryptocurrencies, all of which uh, you don't want to own anyway. They're little, this is a little bit misleading because the public sale of Ethereum was actually much more to insiders than this maintains. That being said, I think this is a great example uh, showing how centralized, especially protocols like Solana and Binance are. If you're finding this video helpful so far, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. If you're into Solana and if you're promoting it, you're really doing a good job for the venture capitalists who backed it. And if we go here to Deal Room, we can see all the way going back to uh, 2018, we have Cosmos Capital, Blockwell Management, Passport Capital, uh, Kevin Rose, prominent, uh, prominent VC from Silicon Valley, etc. You can see all the venture capitalists backing of Solana. Now, if you're going to create a whole new currency and a whole new system around it, I would argue that decentralization is the most important characteristic of a new currency. The whole point is to have a neutral currency that you don't need permission to use or to join. And you also want a currency that cannot be taken over, co-opted, or otherwise captured. If you like centralization, if you like being at the mercy of your wealthy overlords, whether it's government officials or VCs or insiders, just use the US dollar or euro. Uh, they actually run much better than Solano. Solana, uh, Fedwire, for example, only went down for a few hours a couple months ago, unlike Solana. Fedwire is the main system when you send a bank wire that allows banks to send money back and forth. This is the final settlement system for the US dollar. If you're gonna have a centralized system, you want it to run well, and the US dollar runs fairly well. VC-backed startups like Solana, startups with a CEO and a headquarters and a legal team and a CTO, this is not how you achieve neutral, decentralized money. Because once you have insiders, they never give up control. What happened with Satoshi is one of the strangest, weirdest things that's ever happened in history. It was, an, it was a historical accident that can never be repeated. Satoshi released his new money, then he got back on his spaceship and returned to the Andromeda galaxy. Obviously, probably only about a 1% chance that that was actually what happened. Bitcoin is so weird and otherworldly that I would assign a non-zero probability to it. That being said, maybe Satoshi's dead. Maybe he's just the most uh, generous uh, individual who ever lived with the highest, uh, highest uh, self-control 
and the lowest time preferences because he's never moved or sold his Bitcoin. The problem with Solana is it's really the, the worst of both worlds. It's highly centralized, as we've shown. It's VC-backed as a headquarters, a CEO, a CTO, a legal team, etc. And yet, in spite of the centralization, it's suffered repeated performance issues, despite the fact that when you have something that's centralized, it's very easy to have much better performance because you can have kind of a central dictator in control, and you can have a central database, etc. And you can make things run really fast, like the Visa network, for example which of course is not a final settlement layer. It relies on the US government and the US military to secure things. That being said, centralized systems should run better. And Solana uh, is not only not, not only not decentralized, but it also does not run well like you would expect, expect a centralized system to run well. And this is, Solana's had repeated incidents. This isn't the first time. Back in December of 2020, the, uh, the uh, network went down again and uh, stopped uh, pr stopped producing blocks. Now, engineering, whether you're doing regular software or you're doing cryptocurrencies, it's always about trade-offs. And when you get sold some shiny new cryptocurrency that can do everything and has no downside, the people who are selling it to you are liars. There's always downside. You can build a very large air airplane or a very large boat like the Titanic. Unfortunately, it can then have certain vulnerabilities. And it's tr it, this is always true in the real world, not the world of rainbows and unicorns that crypto promoters uh, pretend to exist in. If you have too many TPS, too many transactions per second, the blockchain will simply get too big in terms of its memory requirements and processing requirements, and then it becomes impossible for a lot of people to run a full node, and then you just have really wealthy people, people or insiders or people in first world countries running all the validators or the full nodes. When the blockchain gets too big, in the case of Ethereum, for example, they begin to outsource it to private companies like Infura. And so Ethereum can call itself decentralized, but this is another example of centralization, uh, decentralization theater. Ethereum had this huge 70% pre-mine. It's highly centralized, and most people cannot even figure out how to run a full node. They have to outsource it to another private corporation to do that. This is true for Solana as well. The hardware requirements are quite stunning, especially the RPC node recommendations, uh, 256 gigs of RAM or more. To give you a comparison, I believe this computer I'm running this on, this Mac has uh, 32 gigs and it cost a few thousand dollars. These, these requirements, these hardware requirements, as well as the uh, number of Solana tokens you have to purchase to become a validator, really ensures that it's just a very small number of validators. Five to 12K of hardware in terms of US dollars, approximately, I haven't checked this, you guys can check on it, um, approximately $100,000 of Solana, I'm sorry, 100,000 Solana tokens uh, if you want to have any chance of earning rewards. So if you just buy a few, you're not going to be able to um, re re uh, receive a validator reward. So this is the problem. <clears throat> this is why Solana remains uh, highly centralized. By contrast, Bitcoin optimizes for a secure, decentralized, permissionless base layer that runs on proof of work that can't be gamed or cheated like proof of stake systems like Solana and what Ethereum is moving to with Ethereum 2.0. Who cares if Bitcoin can only do five to seven transactions per second because these are final settlement transactions. Visa can run however many tens of thousands of TPS, but it's not final settlement. It can be reversed up to like 90 days. It relies on Fedwire, it relies on the underlying financial system. And as does Solana, Solana can do whatever they say, hundreds of thousands of TPS, but then the network goes down. It's got a CEO in charge who can turn the thing on and off. Bitcoin, by contrast, optimizes for true decentralization and true security, and the Bitcoin network does not go down, and it doesn't get shut off, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have a CEO controlling things in the way that Solana does. Also, if Bitcoin is this final settlement layer, if it can only do five, six, seven transactions per second, that does not stop its ability to scale. Each of those transactions, those can be final settlement transactions, can be worth hundreds of millions, billions, even trillions of dollars 
eventually. And the Bitcoin base layer, this is really what it should be used for. You don't want to use it for NFTs or selling us like that. You want to use it for something like gold or treasuries, which is what central banks have used as final settlement assets. The thing about Bitcoin, once you have this very found, uh, there's very firm foundation, then you can scale upon it. And this is how engineering always works best. This is how the internet works. When you have a very firm foundation, you can build layer two solutions on top of it, like the Lightning Network, which can easily scale to millions of transactions per second. By contrast, Solana tries to go the marketing route and say, and say we can do all these TPS, and yet uh, they fail on the centralization front. And as we've seen in the last few days, the Solana network is certainly not anti-fragile. It's highly fragile, and it also has a lot of groups backing it that are going to be sellers. All these VCs need to sell their tokens in order to get money for their LPs. So there's this built-in huge uh, overhang of sellers that is to come. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.